capacity of the mill to conduct electricity also increases and electrical conductivity increases. Then plant proteins, whey protein, serum protein, they come into the mill, which are referred as the whey protein, boring, serum, and whey protein. But to maintain the equilibrium, potassium goes out. So potassium decreases, sodium pyrophoride increases, bicarbonates increases, leucocytes increases, bacteria decreases, juice components, lactose, milk proteins, fat, calcium synthesis also decreases. Calcium they decreases in case of mastitis milk. Now you may find, so if, if it is a normal milk composition, now in case of the mastitis, at high cell, this serum will be one, it may be increased more than 200 percent. Sodium by more than 100 percent, okay. Chloride, now this potassium decreases by about 10 percent. Calcium, it may be less than 50 percent. Casein, it decreases 10 to 40 percent. Lactose by 10 percent, and by 10 percent. Whey protein, they increase. So, using components, they decrease. RDR components, they increase, and as they affect the quality of the milk, can which ultimately affects the manufacturing process to the daily milk. Now, similarly, it has a effect on the reproduction. It has been found that intercarbic interval abortions and conception uh, they increase with the first time. Conception rate decreases. Similarly, service for conception increases and days open increase. So it affects the reproductive performance of the animal mastitis mastitis syndrome. So there is a very much correlation between these two uh, mastitis, mastitis and mastitis. Then public health screening tests, high risk of pathogens. More than 50% of the violation may occur due to the increased bacterial count of the milk. Because mastitis bacteria becomes, so they react into the high seed, the bacterial count. Then high risk of drug injury because when there is a more mastitis, usually using more antibiotics, so then there are more chances of getting the drug injury. And 60% of the violation they occur with somatic cell count at far more than four nights and far less. Similarly, relative risk increases to seven fold. So we have done a study at uh, farms at more than 100, 200 farms at a playoff, and we find a good correlation for this. There are more level of the rapid injury at farms with the high cell counts. So this has a great public health significance. Even if at a farm of 100 cows, you mix the milk of one cow with the mastitis into the whole milk, that then total bacterial count will rise more than the maximum permissible limit. So this affects the public health. Now coming to the management from field point of view, how we can manage the disease. Now we divide the mastitis pathogens into two categories. Cow associated pathogens like Staphylococcus aureus, which is more common, Staphylococcus aureus, then environmental pathogens, ground nectar, E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, which are present in the manure, soil, bedding, food stuff, water. They are present in the teeth, other skin, and milky. So, contamination with these organisms, they take place at the milky time, when we are milking from one animal to another animal, through our hands or through the milking equipment from the one animal to another. Whereas the contamination with these organisms, they take place in between milking. After milking, when animal sits down in the, uh, in, the parlor, in the parlor or in the house, then there is the animal may pick up the infection from the ground. So in between contamination takes place. So to prevent the such kind of mastitis, we need cow shed hygiene, very important. To prevent such type of mastitis, we need milking hygiene. So means both milking and environmental hygiene is very important to prevent the disease. Now, when we come to the diagnosis of mastitis, clinical, no problem. Medieval alteration, or we can use this strip cup, which is a simple cup with a black plate. We take streaks of the milk into this. Milk will go down. If there are fine plugins, then they can be well against the black background. So, this is recommended that at every milking, we should do this. By this, we are also minimizing the bacterial load of the milk because these teeth can all infection, the bacteria they are eliminated out. Quality of the whole milk is improved. Secondly, it will react into the infection of the milk and there is a more increase in the milk results. Because most of the farms now they are adapting to the machine milking, so this is recommended. Then other tests like 
California mosquitoes test, GTB car test, electrical connectivity, culture sensitivity, they are the supplemental uh, test like this GTB car test. So this is a robot home. I got new guy which we are preparing in our laundry article at this printed paper. Laundry, this is a yellow in color. And this is based on the pH of the milk. I told you in mosquitoes, pH of the milk is easy. The normal pH of the milk may be 6.6, 6.5. So if that matters, it is not necessary that it will move always to the alkaline side. It may be by 0.1, 0.2, it may come to 0.6, 0.8, it may come to 6.9. So depending on the rise in the pH, color of the sweat, so when we put a drop of milk on the paper, uh, this uh, uh, dye, then it will change to the yellowish green, plus one, green, plus two, and in severe cases, green, plus three. So it can be used as a cow side test but it is little less sensitive. This is not so sensitive as of this CMP pattern test or sodium laurel sulfate test. Here we use the alkyl arrival sulfate or sodium laurel sulfate as a reagent in our laundry. We will prepare the solution. We take the 2 to 3 ml of milk sample. We use left four, left hind, right four, right hind, and then add equal quantity of reagent and we then study for the gel formation. Now, if it is a, if it is a uh, it remains as liquid, then there is a normal milk. If it becomes a little uh, precipitate underground, then it is plus two. When it becomes more thick, like gum, then it is plus two. And when it becomes very thick and central peak, like uh, this bar, once we make a mixture of this, like a wheat roll or like this lady mutton cake, say it as. So then it will be plus two. So this can be used. As a test, and this is most commonly recommended test that we give that it is based on the somatic cell count of the milk. Because whenever there is a high CSL count, then this region will break down the cells and DNA is reached. So this DNA gives the gel formation. Hard test is the electrical conductivity. Now, now this electrical conductivity means I told you when there is a freeze in the ions, then there is a freeze in the uh, electricity conductor of the solid milk. Now, two types of electrical conductivity which is that one. These are the hand-hand physical connectivity means where they are reading comes and other are the in-line connectivity. Even in the Gulf countries, they have a in-line connectivity. Whenever cow comes, it is breaking and electrical connectivity is recorded automatically for each and every team. And they have set up some threshold limit for their cows. Now any cow or any team having more than that defined electrical connectivity, it will be marked as red in the computer, in the sending system. So or, or farmer, it can know, he can know or she can know that this cow, particularly this feed, it may be having a mastitis. So this can be used as an inline connectivity. So what happens in case of mastitis, the electrical connectivity increases. But electrical connectivity is affected by the several components like by by feed, by, by the fat percentage of the milk. Buffaloes, they have less connectivity. Fat has a inhibitory effect on the milk. Crossbred cows have more connectivity. Dog red cows have higher connectivity. So it is also used as an absolute connectivity as well as a relative connectivity. Means we measure the connectivity of all the four quarters in a cow. And if any quarter is having more than 50%, 50 15 percent higher electrical connectivity than the quarter having lowest connectivity, then definitely that quarter is affected with the activity. For example, we have to find the lowest connectivity of five. Now, then other connector 5.5, it may be normal, normal variation, 5.2, 5.5. But when certainly it is having any quarter having more than 5.75, so then that quarter is definitely there. Because I told you that it is almost negligible chances that all the four quarters are having the most access. So this is also used as a relative number. Otherwise, at our farm, we know what is the normal connectivity range of our farm and then we can set the threshold the light in line connectivity and then we can do for the mastitis testing. So, now this is a culture sensitivity testing, uh, gold uh, standard, but which material is there, which drug will be affected for this. So for this sampling is very important. Now because if you are going to contaminate the milk then there will be no part of doing culture sensitivity. For this, practically, I tell you, udder should be cleaned and dry. Now, if the udder is already clean and dry, then there is no need of washing the udder. Unsensitive. Yes, 
if there is some Brahmi speaking to there, there is some badness in there, then you may wash it with this sticky lotion. Then immediately you dry it with paper towels or floor towels, definitely fully completely dry it, including your hands. And then when we have to collect the milk samples, first you disinfect the teeth and with the spirit swab or with some alcoholic swab. And we have to start disinfection from the opposite side. Means if we are milking on the left side, then first you have to clean the right forefeet, right hind feet, then left foot and left hand feet. Now, the one side where we are sitting for the animal milking, that is the left foot, this is left hind, on the opposite side, one tree is right foot and other is right. Now, and when we have to collect the milk sample, we have to take the sterilized test tubes and we have to collect first to discard one to two sheets of milk and then collect the milk one by one in the from the left side. So we have to start milking out from our side, cleaning from the opposite side. This is a simple phenomenon. Because if we will be cleaning on our side, then we may be touching while cleaning other things. Similarly collecting first from other side, then we may be touching these things. So cleaning opposite side with collection our side. This is the so we may collect the milk sample and you have to keep take care whenever the owner comes that the animal has not been treated during the last three to four days. Because otherwise antibiotic will come into the milk and it will not allow the bacteria to grow and it will be a uh, this will be a waste. Uh, we may not effort to be, uh, there will be no use for effort. So, animal should not be treated for three to four days, others should be clean and dry. Then we have to clean the spirits, clean with spirits back and then take one by five sample and take all samples separately. All the quarters they are separate. Never go for testing and purchase the duty of together, all them together from the earth. So, it is recommended that we should go for the quarter four milk samples testing. So, this should be done. We can keep this milk in the refrigerator if we are not immediately able to transfer the milk, but not in the deep freeze, in the lower compartment at 4 degrees, if we can keep it, then we transfer it and we go for the transfer system. Now, when we talk of management of treatment, now it is recommended that uh, when there is a subclinical mastitis and it is a more than two score of CFT, or alternately, either we can treat those, but and if the animal is in the early gestation part of the day, because this dog goes to two other gestation. But in early gestation, when there is a more than three, there is a less cure percentage. So when the animal is in the late gestation, then we should wait for the trimester, means at the end of trimester, the end. So we can either treat the quadrant positive for CFT uh, immediately, or we can alternately do step up and any body protecting, uh, developing clinical mastitis can be treated. So we may treat it by the intramundi antibiotic. There is no need of systemic antibiotic. Or we may use herbal therapy, immunomodulators, commons and minerals. So that may into the other damage and we may react into the cure of the something that mastitis. Now, when coming to the part of mastitis, I told you that these cases, they should be treated as a emergency. If we are treating such cases within four to six hours, we can be able to save the partner, or otherwise we may lose the animal also. Animal may also die. So whenever you get some call or some information in about such type of cases, and many times we confuse it as a snake point, or many times because these cases they mostly occur in the post calming period, within two, three days or five days or four days. Sometimes we confuse with the entire animal become recumbent, we confuse it with the hypocalcemia, with the milk fever. But otherwise, animal is having fever, depression, dullness. So when we treat such cases, whenever you receive some information, advise the owner to immediately do recall stripping of the Every one to two hours, even oxytocin will be used. Cold water application of the animal. Because by recall milking, we will be taking out the toxin. If the toxinia, if the toxins are there, then we may start with the parental antibiotic after 12 to 24 hours. After that, we supplement with the intramuscular uh, uh, antibiotics. Then we have to give the food therapy, very large food therapy, maybe 40 liters, 50 liters, 60 liters of fluid, normal slime, to the animal. Because we have to treat, in this case, animal for shock. 
not harmless like this, then we can give sodium phosphate, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, calcium borogluconate, but it should be used with care after proper hydration, after animal coming out of shock, well, you can't do that. It should be given slow. Then multivitamins, antihistaminics, then tropical herbal application, it may be also tried along. So it should be treated as is emergency and treatment should be started within four to six hours. Otherwise, what happens? There is a first there is a redness, hot, painful, then it will come blue, it will come cold, and then there will be slumber. So maybe you may come across with some mastitis, we may say that with angry mastitis or like later on it becomes bluish, cold and there is a slumping of the quadrant. At that stage there is no treatment. Now, cute mastitis, uh, normal cases, where there is no systemic reaction, but there are plague and then you have to treat it with, but you have to take care of that twice of drug, which drug you should use. And for that you may have your own experience that which antibody is affecting uh, uh, during our cases, or you can have a previous area specific to sensitive consequence in data or far specific data. But you have to show that every weight, dose and dose, dose in carbon, and minimum duration of treatment should be three to five days. Many times in the field we treat per one day, and then the other time and follow, we do not go, we go to the new phase. So then in between treatment, so it will be done that so proper dose, rule, it should be there. Sportal therapy, we may use with the calcium orogluconate, then mineral supplementation, multi-commerce. And it has been found that combination therapy, intramembry plus parental always gives higher cure rates as compared to the known intramembry or parental. And of course, when we are treating the cases, then we have to follow the milk withdrawal period after the treatment. Because otherwise, drug release is taken fast and it will be receptive to the quality of the milk. Now, why drug sensitivity is important? You will find that we have this data of our laboratory for the last 40 years. You may find that certain drugs like MP3, which were affected in 1980, their sensitivity went down to 1995. Again, they resumed. And there are certain drugs which have shown less variation, like Delta Mentor, shown less variation. So, drug sensitivity is very important. We are finding that at one part of one drug inspector, at other part of other drug inspector. So culture sensitivity is important. Then this is the current drug sensitivity pattern of the cigar state, where we are finding this combination drug like sector, young culture inspector, these uh, moxicillin inspector, and from processing we can come and see they are much again in between. Now, duration of therapy is important. Now, when we treat for three days, there is a less cure rate as compared to five days. You may find this. So, minimum when you get the response, minimum three for five days and in proper. Then, which organism is causing an application of the pathogen is important. For example, when you are having a staph or a the it is present deep in the other paradigm and there is no system reaction. Whereas, mild infection, peptomoxy, like C and L, they are present in the milk types. So, when we treat such cases in the intramembry, we get go to react to your brain. Here I first have to focus on this. We keep present in the deep water paradigm. We need, we may get good results only after parental therapy and intramembry. Whereas in case of E. coli, which has a low bacteria, environmental bacteria, so it has toxin. Here we may not get any reaction with intramembry. We need to treat it with the parental therapy. So depending on the type of organ, I told you for particular mastitis, we have definitely need to start with the parental antibiotics. And for staphylococcus aureus, combination therapy is the best. Now, this is the combination therapy. These are the examples that when we treat with combination therapy, then there are more problems. Then, number of previous treatments are important. When the case is presented to you, the already case is presented first time, then there may be a load of 60%. 65%, 50%. Now, when it is by the second time, then there are less cure rates, then again less. And after three times, there may be no cure rate. Now, whenever a case is tied again and again, and this is tied with all this staph aureus, which is the staph aureus, which is the chronic infection. Chronic infection, they are present in the cell, inside the cell. And when we are not properly treating them, these bacteria, they are not killed, and then there is a relapse of the cases. 
and when there are more than three, four relapses, then we have no chances to trace that corpse. Now, now when which drug we should use? Now, when you talk of this pharmacological people, right? They, when they study, they say this endocrinopathy has a very good distribution: erythromycin, trimethyl, paramycin. Whereas the gentamicin has a poor distribution in the liver. So, the, according to them, endocrinopathy should be used. But what happened from our clinical experience? Uh, I, I tell you, we are not getting good response with endocrinopathy. And we are getting very good response with the these drugs like gentamicin. So then I, I, I need to study, and I even I am but no, then why it is happening so? So then one of team uh, from my Germany, which are the buyer, which are endocrine, he told me that this endocrinopathy, this other goes to the other, and it is mainly affected by the gram bacteria, and it does not go intracellular. Because this peptocopies, they are poor intracellular, so that is why we are getting less response to the endocrinopathy as compared to the gentamicin, which has a poor distribution in the other, but it goes to intracellular and it kills the bacteria inside the cell. That is why, in spite of its less distribution to the other, if we maintain the proper dose, morning, evening, or higher dose, single dose, then we may get good response, good treatment with this drug. So your clinical experience always matters, but what you are using and which response you are getting, you have to uh, find the you have to find the protocol or you have to find the uh, make the strategies accordingly for the treatment of the disease. Now these are the some of the drugs like androgen you have to give. This is the dose moxicillin. And whenever we have to slide moxicillin, uh, moxicillin sulfatum four point five gram or nine gram. Emptizine, moxicillin, we have to start with 20 mg per kilogram per day. And then it can be after. Uh, let's get from the combinations like cyprofrogenone, gentamicin, 3 to 5 mg, and 100 to 50 mg, uh, this intramicin. So these are the different drugs which we can choose. Now, just for practical, uh, when we have to use the intramembrane syringe, then we have must ensure that the feed is completely dry, clean, and there is a properly dead area empty. And then we have to clean the tip of the feed with a squid pad. And we need not to insert full cannula into the feed. Only as we place at the tip of the feed and then place the fitter to the sister of the feed and then we can massage the feed up to our distribution. Then when there is a chronic mastitis, when there is a formation of fibrillator cord, when there is a thick fast discharge is coming, when that squatter is not responding to the treatment more than three, four times, such squatters may lead to chemical failure. Or if it is within the late infection, we may give the dry therapy and we may wait. Sometimes the certain quarters they get regain the milking in the next infection. <coughs> Otherwise, if we are source of infection, we can chemically dry off with copper solution, 20 ml, hypertension copper solution. It can be given intramembry, it will create the inflammation and it will permanently dry on the response. But please take care of that. On our it should be used only 5 grams in 100 ml. Sometimes on the advice the farmer and if it has no estimate of the quantity of the copper to it, it was more and then it will cause the inflammation of the whole and it will spoil the whole So that has to be taken care. Now then control of mastitis. So it is not a single way that we can control them. And we can never eliminate totally the disease. We have to follow the uh, strategy. Or first we have to minimize the source of infection by the because it is caused by the material organism and when more low material low is there we will get less material infection. Then eliminate of existing infection, dry therapy, body that we will be prevention of new infections by deep eating, then other defense, enhancing other defense. Uh, normal, uh, this is a general genetic improvement. Then uh, non-specific immunity, nutrition. Then specific immunity, when we talk of vaccination. So all these components, they will affect and control the disease. Now, source of infection, minimizing the source of infection. So this is very important. Making an environment value. We have to segregate and treat the clinical mastitis separately. Lactation factor, subclinical mastitis. 
drying, culling of the groundwater in temporary part with separation of the temporary It has been found that 40% of all chemical cases that are found, they are counted by 7% of the people. Similarly, 50% of the discarded milk comes from 6% of the people. And we have also made a study at our farm, for the, by following the card of farm for the last many years. We found that 60% of the cows that had two episodes of the infection will have another before the end of the patient. So, small number of cows, we are contributing to the mastitis occurrence at the farm and source infection of the farm. So, this and hygiene is very important. We have to keep sure the dryness under the animal. Now, as long as you are ensuring proper dryness, we will be minimizing the source of infection. Now, I would like to share with you some one or two my practical experience. We, we went to a farm, we are called into a farm, and they were getting every day far into the side species. And when we, uh, we went to the farm, what we are seeing, what we, what, what we have seen, the cow was milked. After milking, the uh, cow was directly going to the water tank. They have made a water tank which is available because they have crop with cow, high yielding cow. And when they, they were having a practice to uh, force a cow, we gave you a the milk tank. So when we went there to find the main region, what was happening? They were milking the cow, the orifice was open, and it was going to the water tank where it is a source of urine, dung, E. cry, and gram like this. And it is getting infection and positive infection. So simply managing that management practice, we were able to control that. No antibiotic growth there. And another part, because it was having very high yielding cow, all the time the water was the breakfast, they were on. It was wet, always better than the animal. So they were getting more number of cases. So I, I, I will not contradict this management practices. But we have, when we are taking care of health, we have to meet a balance of these. Because that we have to keep as long as dryness under the animal, we may use intermittent sprinkling, we may use the same like in the bathroom about three, four times, then water fan cooling, so that no wetting is there as the cow. Even not only mastitis, even mastitis, endomastitis, lameness, all they are related to the moist conditions under the animal. Then dry therapy. So what is the uh, dry therapy? I, I tell you what happens. Giving a 40% of the cows which were infected during the dry period, subclinical infection, they may process to the next limitation and they sound well into the clinical mistake. So, primary objective is to have the minimum infected part of the next target. Now, what happens is normally a cow should be dried, a pregnant cow should be dried for a minimum of two months before the next expected age of time. And during this period of dry of period, animal is in the immune suppression. Many you must be seen that very poor, very particular disorders. Many diseases they are acting now. Maybe some post stomach disorders, maybe botrytis, maybe mastitis, maybe other production diseases. So animal is in the immune suppression. So during this period, you will find like this risk of mastitis is more during the first three weeks of the dry period and during the last three weeks of the dry period. So here we get that dry therapy. What is this? This is a long acting antibiotic, which is affected for six to eight weeks or ten weeks. So it, it eliminates the existing inflammatory infection, it prevents the main inflammatory infection, chances of which are six times more. And we have seen, we have done experiment trials at our farms. This increases the cell differentiation and a milk yield by eight to ten percent during the next target. Also, number of <coughs> clinical cases, mastitis cases. They are reduced by significantly in the next calving during the first three months. So we recommend that as far as there is a problem, we should use the dry therapy like nowadays this one capital dry cow is available. So that way should be the we use. And in a hundred cord, if we can prevent the nine new intramedic infection, we will be able to recover the cost of the So it should be used as an end of the uh, lactation while drying of the animal. After giving this intramedic tube, we take care that we have not to milk out again. And we shall use the feed them for 10 to 40 days. Now, the nowadays other feed sealants, they are also coming, a standard feed sealants like a dry food. It is applied as a feed 7 to 10 days prior to calving and as dry 
and it is with the protection for free conclusion. So this it, it has to be used less with the dry bed. Similar internal teeth should be sealed. This is a visible sublight in a parade and it is given at a dry mouth. But we have to take care that in, in this field of water we should be free from infection. Only then we can use the internal teeth sealers. So this can be given intramatory in to provide the physical protection. Because it sees the water and it will not allow the infection to occur. And we have to pass that first thing to use it to spill water. So this can be used. Teeth sealers can be used along with the dry factory. Then TPP. What is this TPP? After every milking, we dip the teeth into the some antiseptic solution like iodine, 0.5% available iodine. It is the best solution. In this, we add 10 to 12 percent of the glycerin. For example, in winter, we may add little more glycerin, otherwise, dryness of the waters may take place. And in, uh, in summer, it may be up to 10 percent. Now, after every milking, we dip the tea one by one and then keep it in between. We can use again, we put the solution in this, but in between, we have to clean the, this water. And it is a regular practice which you should be used on all lactation pounds and during first 15 days of dry out and before 10 to 15 days of expected time. So this will harm a layer at the heat tip, it will prevent the new inflammatory infection to go through Similarly, chlor acidine 0.5% plus glycerol it can be used. So we dip all the lactating and as out, it will prevent the new inflammatory infections and also it keeps the teeth healthy. Now in winter you might be coming across any fishes like the dryness of the leaves, fishes, they will be cured and they will be, they will be, they will be made healthy, smooth. So this is a routine practice which should be used uh, on daily basis. And you may find that these teeth which are dead, they are more smooth as compared to other teeth they are dry. Then there are two types of milk, spray and top milk. Now by spray, it will be difficult to so we, uh, have a uniform disease and we will have a higher level. Whereas by top dipping, we have a uniform distribution, it is economical, but we need to cover all of it. So scientifically, economically, we recommend top dipping than spray, but otherwise, spray, we are also coming with the milk. Then non-specific immunity, uh, other health system, non-specific immunity, what is that? That is a general immunity, uh, ability of the use of this tool of hypocytosis that would be in general. So this can be enhanced by the use of these uh, cytokines, interferons, interferons, and by the good immunity. Where is the specific immunity like we use for HS, like we use for FMD, specific immunity, vaccination against Stavogius or Ebola, then genetic immunity. Now, nutrition, there are role of vitamin A in enhancing the functional epithelium, beta carotene, vitamin E, selenium, and antioxidant, copper fed the host tissue, then strengthen the skeleton. And it has been recommended that this mineral mixture, nutrition, it should be used even during dry period. Because animal is in the mineral pathway by staying in this field. So, nutrition recommended for the part day around for the prevention of the disease, vitamin A, the fifty reserve, the beta protein, this like zinc, copper, and vitamin they should be used for the they will enhance the immunity, causes the immunity and prevent the immunity. Now this is the vaccine which have been tried for example for E. coli. They are giving vaccine first day after a dry off, then 30 days later and then 40 days. And it was significantly effective to reduce the clinical failure of mastitis in the post public period. Because many E. coli particular mastitis cases, they are occurring during the first month of the car. With the lower duty of the duty that we have done, and it will significantly reduce uh, that. Then, genetic improvement. So, this has a good improvement. I, I told you this morphological feature earlier. The milk yield and somatic cell, they have a correlation of 0.25. When we are selecting the animal for milk yield, it will just into 0.3 to 9% increase in the occurrence of the mosaic's quality. So, there is a genetic correlation between the somatic cell. And subclinical 0.5 and subclinical uh, somatic cell from store and clinical mosaic of 0. So selection of sire and DNA then based on the somatic cell milk matrix color will prevent the yield. But it may affect the yield phase. So ideally decision based on the selection and exit 
that they eat uh, by the according to the economic level. This region they have to see at too much in what level they have to attain the when we have to what level we have to prevent the okay. Now uh, I, I would like to share this uh, one slide. So this is a slide from Japanese from my guide, they are given by GAD and all there. So they have studied thousands of quarters in Germany. And they found that after a yield of 6,000 corona per meditation, uh, defense capacity of the animal goes down. Because there is a provision to culling, and culling of the cow decreases significantly. So they say it is always ideally to have long term uh, keeping of the animal, lifetime production of the animal, that cow, we should keep the cow at 6 to 7,000 corona of meditation, meaning probably 20 to 25 corona. And I think the same applies here. So when we have to take the more medications, more number of animals, and we have to avoid the medication, so then we can choose the animal according to that level of the yield of the animal, 25 to 30 kilograms. We are finding that cow to be better. But otherwise, we can count their giving of 50 kg, 60 kg. How long they are having to be production, one medication. In a dry, they are having on an average 1.1 medication. So then they have to cut down. Animals. So this all depends on the breeding policy of the state and the country. So to conclude, we have to select the breeding, step up every milking, GP, CMP, every one two months, circling the mosquitoes and internal infectry, eliminate by a chronic basis, then hygiene, PPT, diabetes, proper nutrition, and when we apply all these, we have found that we may get the duties to benefit for one rupee spending. So mosquitoes control it. By my cost, it came. So, with this, I, I thank you all for your patience with me. Thank you. Guys.